Assalamu alaikum, this is Dr. Hasna with Hasna's Natmi and today we're going to discuss the neurovascular bundle of the sole of the foot including the nerves and the arteries in the sole. Alright, so let's get started without further ado. We have the medial and lateral plantar nerves in the sole of the foot. Now what is necessary to know about these two is how they supply the various muscles. I've already mentioned in the previous video, the medial plantar nerve is responsible for supplying the F1 lad muscles. Alright. F standing for the flexor hallucis brevis, the first lumbrical, the abductor hallucis, and the digitorum, flexor digitorum brevis. All right, now let's talk about the origin and course of the medial plantar nerve. Overall, both medial and lateral plantar nerves are going to arise deep to the flexor head and aculum in the tarsal tunnel from the tibial nerve. These two are the terminal branches of the tibial nerve. We all remember that medial plantar nerve is giving cutaneous supply to the anteromedial plus the three and a half digits and the lateral plantar nerve is giving anterolateral cutaneous supply with the lateral one and a half digits. All right. What other things and how do, do these two nerves supply those other uh, structures? All right. Let's begin the medial plantar nerve first. It will originate from the tibial nerve. Then it basically is going to come to lie between two muscle, the abductor hallucis and the flexor digitorum bravis all right so the medial plantar nerve once again it begins here uh, from the tibial nerve and then it runs between the first layer two of first layer muscles the abductor hallucis and the flexor digitorum bravis after this once it's ran between them it comes to divide into a couple of its terminal branches the first branch is the proper digital branch which supplies the medial side of the toe then we have three common plantar nerves all right and this is how it ends. How does it supply the various structures? Now that is the most important part over here. It has to supply the F1 lad muscles. So which part supplies which? The main trunk of the medial plantar nerve running between the abductor hallucis and flexor digitorum brevis is responsible for supplying an abductor and the FDB, obviously because it's passing between them. So. The main trunk will always supply an abductor and a digitorum. So it supplies the abductor hallucis and the flexor digitorum brevis. All right. Then comes the first proper digital branch that it gives. This will supply the flexor hallucis brevis muscle. All right. This one. And finally, the second common plantar digital nerve is responsible for supplying your first lumbrical muscle. And this is how you are supposed to answer the question on how the medial plantar nerve is supplying the various muscles. And apart from this, it gives cutaneous supply by giving one proper digital for the medial side of the toe, then another branch which supplies adjacent side of the, med the big toe and the second toe, and then one that supplies the adjacent sides of both fingers till it supplies the medial three and a half toes, all right? That was the medial plantar nerve. Now let's talk about the lateral plantar nerve. Now the lateral plantar nerve has a more lateral course after arising from the tibial nerve. It goes laterally. So once again, origin is the tibial nerve. Then it runs laterally till it reaches the base of the fifth metatarsal bone. All right. Once, it's, once it reaches the fifth metatarsal bone's base, it divides into a superficial and a deep branch all right the superficial branch further divides into a lateral branch and a medial branch all right and the deep branch supplies certain areas so how does the lateral plantar nerve supply your sole of foot and the structures so it is necessary to know that the main trunk of the lateral plantar nerve is responsible for supplying once again just like the medial plantar nerve it is going to supply a digitorum and a abductor so obviously here the abductor that lies is the abductor digiti minimi and the flexor digitorum accessorius muscle that we studied in the second layer then it had a superficial and a deep branch the superficial branch further divides into a lateral and a medial branch the lateral most branch is going to supply the flexor digiti minimi brevis and it supplies the third plantar interosci and the fourth dorsal interosci. How do you remember this? Well, remember the interosseous muscles are three plantar interosci and four dorsal interosci muscles overall. So the last of these 
uh, muscles are going to be supplied by the lateral branch of the superficial branch of the lateral plantar nerve. And this supplies the adjacent side of this, these toes. Hence, the lateral plantar nerve is now going to supply with lateral one and a half digits. Rest all will be supplied by the deep branch of the lateral plantar nerve, including all the interosseous muscles, the lateral lumbricals that were left, and the adductor hallucis muscle. So that was all for the lateral plantar nerve. Now let's begin the discussion of the arteries. The medial plantar and the lateral plantar arteries both arise from the posterior tibial artery deep to the flexor retinaculum. What happens next is that the medial plantar artery follows the same course as the medial plantar nerve running between the abductor hallucis and the flexor digitorum brevis and it eventually gives various branches. Lateral plantar artery, however, is responsible for forming the plantar arch just like we had in the hands. Here there is just one arch known as the plantar arch. And how is the plantar arch formed? The plantar arch is formed as a continuation of the lateral plantar artery after it has given off its superficial branch. So let's see how this works. Just like uh, the lateral plantar nerve, lateral plantar artery also originating after originating from the posterior tibial artery, it runs laterally till the base of the fifth metatarsal. At the base of the fifth metatarsal, it gives a superficial branch, all right? Once it's given a superficial branch, this lateral plantar artery continues medially as the plantar arch up to the first interosseous space, which is between the first and second metatarsals. What happens here? If you remember, we've studied in the dorsum of the foot that there was a artery, the dorsalis pedis artery, which dipped down in the first interosseous space to join this lateral plantar artery to complete your plantar arch. So overall, how is the plantar arch formed? It is a direct continuation of the lateral plantar artery after it has given off its superficial branch. Medially, it is, continues and is completed in the first interosseous space when dorsalis pedis dips down and joins the arch. What are the branches of, of this arch? So this arch gives the four plantar metatarsal arteries. So one for this, one for these toes, one for these toes, and one more for these toes. And the first plantar metatarsal artery is responsible for giving supply to the medial side of the great toe. So these are the one, two, three, four plantar metatarsal arteries in which the first plantar metatarsal artery is giving a branch to the medial side of the great toe. And the superficial branch of the lateral plantar artery, it is going to supply the lateral side of the lateral toe. All right. What are other branches of the plantar arch? It gives three proximal perforating arteries which pass through the second, third and fourth interosseous spaces to join the dorsal metatarsal arteries of the dorsum of the foot and the plantar metatarsal arteries are responsible for giving the distal perforating arteries. These distal perforating arteries will also uh, go to the dorsum of the foot and connect with the dorsal metatarsal arteries distally. So these are the dorsal perforating arteries, these are the proximal perforating artery. So this was the pl plantar arch. The plantar arch is a continuation of the lateral plantar artery after it's given off its superficial branch and it continues medially. Once it enters the first interosseous space, that's where it's completed when the dorsalis pedis joins it. It gives off four plantar metatarsal arteries which supply adjacent sides of the toe. The first plantar metatarsal artery gives us gives a branch to the medial side of the toe. The superficial branch of the lateral plantar artery continues to supply the lateral side of the little toe. Moreover, its other branches are the proximal perforating arteries. There are three that join the dorsal metatarsal arteries and the distal perforating arteries. So that was all for the neurovascular bundle of the sole of the foot and this marks the completion of it. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel.